the Nikon Z6 and Z6 Mark II. I'm gonna use them, I'm gonna review them, and I'm gonna tell you just what it's like jumping from a DSLR to a mirrorless. My son said to me, Dad, I'm thinking of trading in my DSLR and going mirrorless. What do you think? I said, are you mad? DSLRs are proper cameras. Get a grip, son. And then Nikon sent me one of these. Now, in 1983, I started work at a local newspaper as an apprentice press photographer. It was my first job and I was given my first Nikon camera, a brand new shiny Nikon FM2. Jeez, I love that camera. Then a month or so later, another new apprentice started and he got an FM2 too. His name was Stuart Rittle and we've been friends and colleagues shooting Nikons together ever since. Anyway, I've been a Nikon guy for a while and I've done a few video reviews of older Nikons. But those good people at Nikon said, never mind the past, Phil, forget old cameras. Let's have a look at some mirrorless Nikons. So they sent me this, a Nikon Z6 and a Nikon Z6 Mark II. And they said, tell us what you think. Now, I've only got 38 years experience with Nikon. So rather than doing this on my own, I thought I'd ask Stuart, who's a good friend and business partner and award-winning photographer, to come and do the review with me. Let's have a look at these modern minuscule marvels and see how they stack up against a DSLR. So Stuart, what did you think when you first picked one up? Well, when I first picked it up, I just thought, it's very light. <laughs> it is light. <laughs> <laughs> it's very small. And I suddenly thought, my hands have got a lot bigger because the camera body itself is so small in comparison to holding the DSLR with the drive on the bottom and stuff like that. I mean, like didn't that. you think, I mean, what I thought when I first picked one up, having had 38 years with a DSLR <laughs> was actually, this was a lens with something attached yeah. to the back rather than a camera with a lens attached. Oh yeah. It, it, it feels like you're holding a lens, certainly yeah. with this one. I mean, this is the, um, this is the, uh, the original, the Z6 with the adapter and my um, FX lens. And it's considerably bigger Hello. than that, but more than bigger, it's it's considerably heavier, isn't it? Oh god, yeah. I mean, there's a there, there's a big difference, but there is something I quite like about that. Now, normally when I've got a DSLR on, it sits like that, and this lens here keeps knocking on your arms and on your door frames. And if you've got two, then then you know they're sticking out, and and they actually are quite um, intrusive. But with this FX lens, it actually pulls the whole thing down. And what that means is, the whole thing is just easier. It's easy to walk around with, it's lighter, it doesn't get in the way, but also it's there ready look straight away. It's the ideal position for press photography, um, you know, events photography. And having this on your shoulder, you can really notice the difference from a DSLR. It is much, much lighter. There's a big, big difference. Um, but I love the way it sits, look, just there, ready to go, straight away. Absolutely ideal. When you put the 70 to 210 on as well, it's even more exaggerated. <laughs> <laughs> oh, the 70 to 210. <laughs> it's like you're carrying a lens and you think, well, have I got the camera? Well, it reminds me <laughs> of those sports lenses on yeah, at the Olympics, the days, doesn't it? Yeah. Those huge, great big new yeah, box yeah, lenses yeah, with, the little, yeah, with the little camera on the back. back. Yeah. It is something you get used to. I mean, literally with just a day shooting with this, I very quickly got used to um, the size of the body. Uh, and I mean, ergonomically, it is good, isn't it? Ergonomically. Yeah. It feels. Would you put a battery pack on? I think I'd like to charge, try the battery pack, just purely from years of using a battery pack on the DSLR. I know what you're saying about the small, and I've heard other photographers as well say, I like the lightness, I like the smallness of it. It's but one of those things, isn't for it? Do, me, you want, do you want to look like a pro <laughs> photographer, or do you, want, do you want it to be light and, and lightweight? And, and, uh, you know. My only slight thing is I do feel from years, and I think it's just, you know, what I've been used to, I do feel as if it's a bit, something's missing there for me. Yeah. I know do you, you, know, I I know I you quite like it. like it the other I way. I think but I can get used to it, but then again, I'm, I'm, I'm not, you know, I'm not uncomfortable with a compact. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's the bottom line. 
Um, I quite like um, I quite like a heavy camera. Um, like as you know, my old favourite was the the uh, the D3S. Uh, you know, it's big and bulky and sturdy, and you knew you got something in your hands. But I think I could get used to that. And I am surprised at the weight of this. Um, one interesting thing about putting the uh, adapter, what's it called, the adapter, the FTZ adapter, which means you can fit your, your FX lenses on. One thing that I did notice about that, it's got this big plate on the bottom here because obviously um, Nikon realised that it was probably going to be um, a little bit uh, heavy uh, on the front end. Uh, and so they, they put this plate on, which you can attach to, to the tripod or the monopod. But I really like this. I really like this plate because if you hold your camera properly, <laughs> and that's a big if, but <laughs> if you hold your camera properly, so not uh, out and about like this, holding the camera you know, with one hand each side like we see on the, uh, on the BBC dramas. <laughs> but um, <laughs> no offence BBC, I'm sure Sky and Netflix and everybody else does it on their dramas too. Um, but if you hold your camera properly with one hand underneath, it's a flat bottom here, look, and it fits beautifully into the palm of your hand. And it's almost as if Nikon designed it. <laughs> There'll be designers <laughs> now saying, ergonomists <laughs> saying, well, you knew that, that's why it's there, you fool. <laughs> um, but I really like it. And look at how flat that is. It just feels really comfortable now. This hand, this hand now, like in golf, this hand's doing nothing but not taking any weight. It's just doing the manipulation of the buttons and the dials. This hand here is doing all the holding. So initial impressions are really good in the hand. It feels ergonomic, it feels nice, and it feels comfortable. Now I've got the uh, uh, Z6, and you've got the Z6 Mark II there, and there's something uh, about this one that I wonder why. Sony XQD card, and nothing. That's it, Sony XQD card. That means you can only use these cards, and I know they're very good, but they're not cheap. They're not so easy to get hold of, and you need an XQD car reader. And in actual fact, if you're a pro, you need probably two or three, one for your computer at the office, one for your, your uh, uh, laptop. And so it starts becoming a little bit expensive, but... Here we go, surprise, surprise. The difference with the new one is we've got two card slots okay so you still got the xqd card if you like that and you want to use that but you've also got sd sd an sd card and of course with an adapter you can use micro sd so that is a really big plus oh god yeah because i mean you know even if your card gets corrupted or something goes down or something goes wrong you can walk into a news agent you can walk into tesco you can buy an sd card yeah, put it in there and, straight and, away. And Whereas trying to find an XQD card that's gone wrong, if you're sort of in the middle of nowhere. And also, we've we've shot for people, haven't we, that have wanted the raw footage. Oh yeah. And uh, so we've Unplugged. downloaded the footage. Um, Whacked it on our laptop, or even said, their computers. And, yeah, or yeah, yeah or, and and just said, "There's the card." Yeah. It's I yours. mean, that, that's take the, it away. And, and you know yeah, as well we as can, a, we can make another copy when we get back, or yeah. or, or you know. And keep it on a, stored on a, a on a hard drive or something. I mean, SD cards, you know, are so user friendly because if you've got to drop it on a, you know, a graphic designer's computer, if you're on a shoot, or you've got to stick it on your clients, every every computer, laptop, everybody's got an SD card reader either built in or or, or on the desk, haven't they? The other good thing with having two cards is you can set this camera up to back up to SD from XQD. Oh, well. can you? So you can have both. So you can have both. So you can so literally give the client the, uh, the card could, and say, there you go. There's, yeah, there's, there's, and you've got a copy. And you've still got a copy. So, so that's good. Right, now, we are old school in the fact that we're DSLR users, okay? Mirrored camera users. What we see through the viewfinder is actually <laughs> real time. It's actually yeah. what you see, you yeah, know, yeah, yeah. from that smile yeah. on your face, you know where I'm going to. Now, okay, a lot of younger photographers are going to be really used to electronic. What do you think? Yeah. Well, initially, when I first looked at it, I thought, 
This looks a bit weird. <laughs> <laughs> looks a bit like a computer game. I thought I was there, sort of, you know, playing a game. But I do think the advantage is that you can, when you shut the camera down or stop it down or you make a change, you can see that change. It's all real. Yeah, what, 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 it's what real you see, time. What you get. Yeah, so it's in there. I think you've got to get over that initial pixelation effect and contrast and the over sharpness in a way. It was the contrast that got me when when you were looking yeah. through. Particularly if you were shooting to the sun or something, suddenly the contrast became very, very obvious and yeah. it was difficult for me to see some of from the mid -tones. But I think that is just a if I'm honest I'm just getting used to a new thing. Yeah. I mean, you know, we're used to, to using um mirror cam, so what we're seeing is just a mirror image of real life. life. Uh, it's just something you get used to. But the payoff is quite a big payoff. Oh God, yeah, because it, it, it reassures you firstly. I mean, yeah, you know, you, you know what shutter speed and ISO and your exposure should all be bang on, but it just gives you that second sort of security so blanket of, level, doesn't it? Instead of doing what we, what we would do um, traditionally at a job where we take a picture and take have a picture a and take a picture back. and say, oh, just hang on a second, <laughs> I have a look on the back. Oh, yeah, I'm Polaroid. just slightly <laughs> under my third, or I, I'll change that, yeah. yeah. But you're seeing it real time, so yeah. actually you're stopping the need to keep going and referring yeah. to the picture. And, and I like, obviously, again, this is bigger than the DSLRs, the back. Yeah. And I, I like, and I know I'm not sure what you think of it. Hey, you, as soon as you put that up to your lens, it switches across to through the lens and and pops on. I know you can change it, yeah. but I think that's really good because effectively what you've just said is. We use that as the Polaroid, old school again, guys, sorry about that. Mm. But looking at the image and then nature for us is to put it up to your eye and you, you see it. So it flicks from one to the other, which is what exactly what we were doing manually before. Yeah, so, so you, don't, you don't need to. Now, that's interesting. Let's talk about that um, screen because now here's the thing again, old school photographers versus new young uh, photographers. And that is shooting using the screen. Now, I suppose phones have got a lot to do with this, mm -hmm. but more and more, I see photographers shooting out on professional jobs, holding the camera up and actually not bringing it up to their, to their eye and using this. Now, to me, that is wrong. That is, that is something that is you know, not a good practice. I was always taught, use the viewfinder, but you know, things are changing and these screens are so good. And when I was out shooting with this camera, it took me about five minutes to get used to that. And I, I actually liked it. Yeah. I actually really liked it. And I think the image that you get on the screen is much closer to that um, image uh, via a mirror on a DSLR. Because oh, yeah. you're not so close up to it. Your eye's not so close. It doesn't look so bright and contrasty. Uh, and because you're away, just a little bit more it gives you a much more realistic look and i found myself using that more and more and more did you use it um i didn't use it as much as you if i'm being honest i think old habits die hard but for me i like it i think there's you know really good uses for it i think we went out today and we shot something as well whereas you can get the camera really low, low down you know in the old days you'd be lying on your stomach in the mud or something like that or you'd <laughs> yeah, you know or just not do the picture, <laughs> or do the picture. <laughs> or no, no, that would never happen <laughs> and as you got a bit older the picture angle became higher because you couldn't get down that low <laughs> yeah. uh, but now obviously we did a shot to shoot you did it i think today over some water and and you could virtually put the camera in the water and that is the screen uh there was a puddle today uh, we'll put the image up on the screen and um the road was virtually unpassable um without a four by four luckily we had a four by four but that would be a good oh, thing bun fight. If, if you were in a bun fight, fight yeah uh, that for anybody that doesn't know is a press turn for um if you're outside court and it's a big case and there's like 200 Doctors and reporters there and there's masses of people and there's one person a celebrity or somebody from a court case or whatnot in the middle you're trying to get a picture one of the ways historically to do it was to get your camera up high hold it and guess and guess <laughs> we well, don't need to guess now because you can put that screen down and you've still got an idea of, of what you're taking and that works in the other way too today that came all the way up like this uh, and I was able to get the camera to water level, literally just sitting just above 
the uh, surface of the water and get all those lovely reflections of the trees and um, had we have had somebody coming through it would have made a really good press picture the up for the floods. The only thing I would say about that and this is my next point it's great yeah. for all the reasons we've just explained mm. but for the younger people out there as well who are know, bloggers yeah yeah I know what you're gonna say and all that kind of stuff they've gone to yeah. all this effort to do all of that and you just think why didn't you do why didn't it reticulate it would Flick have been, it the side, I'm, I'm guessing that's it. The, yeah, I'm guessing maybe that's the next step. It's reticulating screen so yeah. that it's hinged on the side yeah. so that you can bring it out and, and turn it, it round and you can see. And you'd be able to see a picture of yourself. Um, and that's, that's not just selfies, and, uh, you know, and vlogs. I mean, uh, we're filming this at the moment. We've got a broadcast camera. That is our main camera for filming on. But our close-up cameras are both uh, DSLRs. The ability to flip the screen back and see uh, if you're in shot or not um, when you're setting it up uh, would, be, uh, would be really useful. So, I want to talk about lenses. We've got the 24-70Z lens, which is a, uh, an f4, and we've got the 24-70 uh, again, is it? Uh, but this is the 2.8. Yeah. Uh, could we notice a difference? The certainly feel this is certainly a more substantial lens. The 2.8 is a substantial lens. The, the F4 does feel like a bit of a kit lens. Uh, well, it is the kit lens, isn't it? That's what they sell them as. They sell them in a pack. You know, okay. you see this lens, that bracket, the body. And how did it perform? I thought it was okay. Um, I mean, it does feel different, as we said about the ergonomics at the start. It does feel smaller and lighter. But in a funny kind of way, I don't know whether that's a bad thing, yeah. especially for video. Yeah. I think that's not bad. I mean, I must prefer, everybody's going to say they're going to prefer this, and it is a better lens because it's exactly the same as that lens virtually, but the Z version of it. Um, it's a lot of money, though. Compared I, to that. Compared to that. I don't think that. it's a lot of money for what it is. Oh, but no, 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 no. Uh, uh, for uh, what it is, no, no, I mean, no. It's, you know, it's, it's totally it's, wrong. You know, the, the point is, compared to that lens... If you've got these lenses, yeah. especially for stills, which is what we've worked out today, you can use the glass in that that's fantastic. The 70 to 200, I've got another 17 yeah. to 28, I think it is. I think obviously you've lost a stop, haven't you? But, but, but more than that. I think that overrides it because you can see through that <clears> the viewer. Yeah, I'm going to say you, you, you've lost a stop, but, but that isn't compensating for for the amazing ISO performance. Because yeah. when you've got ISO performance like that, when you can go so high with the ISO, so, that stop isn't anywhere near as important as it was in the film days. I think if you were looking to, to move to the Z series and, and money was an issue, I think this is the way to go. I, you know, I think you know, it is a good lens. I think everybody's gonna, you know, if, if money was no object, they'd have that. I think, like you've said, the way it feels, it really is bright. It, we're always used to working with these type of lenses, the f2.8 mm -hmm. versions. You've got that extra bit of, you know, if you want to get really arty, that extra bit of bocker. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but, but, you know, that's not, that's not having to go at this. I still think this f4, you know, is a good lens. And if, you know, if, it's, if it's a case of getting into the uh, mirrorless Z system or not, then I would just oh, yeah, wholeheartedly definitely. say, you know, go for it. I'm, I'm definitely not going to say. And I mean, we'll have a look at the images and yeah, see what they, like. what they say when we blow them up. But initially, they look, they look good, there, didn't they? Initially, looking at them on camera and blowing them up in the camera, they look pretty darn good, I have to say. And I think this is good because it oh, means no. this. This is. The, I mean, this is a game changer for me because, you know, you're invested. We invested in glass a lot very early on, and I think that's one of the reasons that you stay with, with um, a particular brand and whatnot, because you've invested so much in it, and, and you get to know a brand. But I have to say, when I heard there was going to be an adapter that you could put your um, uh, FX lenses on, but there were going to be Z lenses as well, I just thought, yeah, I know where this is going. Uh, it's going to be the poor relative, isn't it? But it isn't. No, no. I mean, I've been shooting all day with my lens on this camera. <laughs> I really like it. And I'm looking at the pictures and I'm thinking, you know, picture quality wise, I can't really no. see again to look at them on yeah. the camera, but, but I can't see it. Uh, focusing, that's a different matter. I think 
in in stills format is fine. Oh, without a shadow of a doubt, yeah. you know, I, I wouldn't hesitate to say, you know, get yourself one of one of these lenses. You know, this is a twenty four to seventy two eight uh, ED lens um, and a silent wave lens, and you know, it works absolutely brilliantly, absolutely brilliantly with this uh, camera. So but you do get the chatter. The what bits of chatter when you you know when you using it if you're using it in video mode and you're using it in the, you know various focusing modes using it on continuous or yeah. full full focusing you do uh, get the slide video, you can hear that chick, 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 well, i suppose if you're using radio mic you're not going to pick it up but it's that nagging little doubt in the back of well you. it's the nagging little doubt and it and it's also you know if you want to get a bit of atmos from an on-camera yeah. mic you know if, if whereas the z lenses you know, they were totally silent they were and they were quick and silent. Uh, interestingly, um, I, you know, I noticed, I don't know if this is a thing, I, 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 I suppose it is, but I noticed that when you turned some of the lens functions off, like pet eye detection and, um, uh, you know, eye detection, it got faster and faster. Yeah. Uh, and I think the more you're asking the, the autofocus to do, then, you know, probably the slower it gets, and when I say slow, I'm talking like <laughs> Not seconds much. here. Yeah. I mean, you know, you wouldn't be able to tell, but talking of uh, eye detection, it did it good? Oh yeah, it was really good. I thought it was really good. I mean, we did that bit, you know, you walking around and moving around like that. And well, I, I was walking towards the camera and we did it on both, didn't we, to, to see yeah. whether, you know, the, the, the ED lens here would, uh, would keep up. And I don't think it did too bad a job, no. really. And I think when we sort of initially, you know, took ownership for a couple of weeks of these to give them a whirl, I think the autofocus was the big elephant in the room. It's the thing we thought was going to be not very good, basically. Yeah, because I mean, you know, lots of people have said, you know, all other brands, ah, but, but, Sony, but, Fuji... And we've got to mention the firmware three. We are running it on firmware three, the yeah. three update, yeah. which has been, um, a, you know, a revelation to these. You know, so if you do watch anything out there on, on YouTube, make sure you got the latest. Make sure you'll get the latest videos uh, looking at these cameras. Not something that was put on there when they were released, because with the new firmware three update, they are a completely and utterly different camera in the way that the autofocus operates. Um, the eye detection and the, they've got pet eye detection and I mean you know I tried it out there was a there was a couple walking along the canal um, yesterday when I was out with it you know I, I said do you mind posing for a quick picture and they got a dog and I said can I take a little portrait of the dog it's got pet eye detection I wonder if it works I literally spent three maybe five seconds taking that picture of the dog's face I didn't uh, I didn't do any kind of um, searching for the eye I just pointed the camera at the dog uh, the pet eye detection and the, uh, w w w was on and poof, the picture when it came up is so sharp that when I blew it up, there's a, <laughs> there's a portrait of me there. Actually, there's a portrait of me in, in the, the dog's eye. eye. Unbelievable. Yeah, it is good. It is, it is good stuff. I think you, for video, though, I think you would be wise to invest in one of the Z lenses. Yeah. I think that's, you know, there is that sort of... I think it works a bit more efficiently. It is quiet. It it's is just faster. faster. I mean, um, we, I, I did some stills in the high street of the village uh, of cars coming towards me and uh, shot on the Z lenses. Absolutely every single frame is pin sharp. Yeah. Absolutely pin sharp. It worked with this, but every two, second or third frame I found it was very slight. The, 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 the lens was struggling to keep up with the camera, is, I suppose what I'm, I'm saying and I mean there, you can go into the settings as well because there are settings in the custom setup that you can tweak it you can make it more sensitive you can okay. make it faster you know but then yeah, that we is, haven't done that have that, we for well, this lens there's what, so. I've, I've had a bit of a play about with this one but it is very much a personal thing oh, right. I mean okay. talk, talking to the guys back at Nikon they yeah. said you know that is very much a style thing you and know. I'm picking hairs here aren't I because oh, yeah I mean because, we're not criticizing you know, it at all I, I, no I, I, I'm not saying it didn't work what I'm saying is that you know if I took you know 12 pictures maybe two of them weren't quite sharp and when I say not quite sharp I'm not talking still horrendously uh, I'm still acceptably sharp I'm just saying that there might have been a bit of softening on, on yeah. you know, some edges of the car could have been a reflection whereas this was probably you know 9 out of 10 10 out of 10 wasn't it yeah and this is sort of an 8 you know yeah. so 
uh, phenomenally good, all the same. Uh, what about speed lights? Uh, we, you know, we, we, we tried speed lights. They yep. worked absolutely as brilliantly as speed lights. I mean, I've got five in my kit bag. I love Nikon speed lights. I'm going to do another video about that one of the days because we tend to use, um, you know, multi-flash. Um, we, on the D800 and the D810, we're both fans of the flash commander mode. I know. On the back of the camera. And that is one thing you can't do with this camera. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> Yeah. You've got to buy a little tra a, tra a sender, you know, from the top, which yeah. you can get to, to do it, but it's another piece of kit. Yeah. I don't know whether it's possible, whether they could have had something that... Maybe in a firmware update, yeah. Nikon, would be really nice to get Flash Commander mode back into these... Uh, I mean, obviously, you, you, they use the little flash, built-in flash, don't they, on ours, which does it. Well, it do yeah, but they don't need to. You can assign uh, a, a, the yeah. speed light as being yeah. the uh, master flash. Yeah, if you could do something like that. I mean, they might be able to, I don't know. But for me, the way I use my DSLR was the little built-in flash, flash commander mode. What we mean by flash commander mode is there's actually something in the menu that allows you to use the pop-up flash to trigger, uh, is it four? Three. Three. Three separate flash units so that you can actually put them around uh, one uh, as a main, one as a fill-in, one as a rim light or a backlight or a background light. So you actually can create a little mini studio. And you can control the settings from the back of well, the that, Yeah, absolutely. You don't even have to go and put them you know, up and down as you would if you've got sort of Boeing's mm -hmm. or Elinchrom sort of lights. You, know. um, you can actually control everything from with your, with your thumb on the dial at the so back so you can turn some up and some down and they're TTL that's the other thing these aren't just manual flashes this is TTL, TTL operation so you can turn them up turn them down and just get the light exactly how you want it from the back of the camera we like that but we really like it on the Z series too so moving on I'm going to come on to something now which for us express photographers um, who do lots of commercial work but lots of conferences lots of shows lots of um, events where things are happening and are newsworthy, the app. Oh yeah, the app. The and you're a big fan. <laughs> you're a, a big, big, big fan. fan. You've been wanting this for longer than I can remember. You know, Stuart has said to me so many times, I do not want to leave Nikon, but why can I get a picture off my iPhone to the client straight away from the launch, but I can't get one off the phone without going back to the car, getting the laptop out, getting the card reader out, firing it up, downloading it, hooking my phone up to the laptop, tethering it, emailing a picture to myself, emailing it. Now, we needed to be able to get a picture quickly and Nikon have fixed it and they fixed it really well. Tell us about the app. Yeah, I mean, so initially, this was the, the big thing for me that's really attracted me. I know the video is good, but the app itself, uh, Snapbridge, I know when it first came out with Nikon, a lot of people thought it was a slightly flaky. It was a bit hit and miss but they've done masses to it now really robust works fantastic really easy to set up basically it pairs your cam the camera with your phone it's a simple click on the app on the and the app itself you take the pictures you want you can have them auto streaming which i don't think you want because your phone so soon starts no dying. but if you were a fashion photographer yeah, or something, yeah that's and perfect you wanted the pictures yeah, you, you yeah. Know, or if you were at a football Ball match, game and you've got a, uh, and you've got got a somebody, guy somebody there yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, sitting, you he, know. He it, can see everything, which is great. And if you've got a client as well, you know, who wants to look at the phone and she can see or he can see stuff that you're shooting yeah, and they like yeah. that or they don't like the way you're going or they like the way you're going, they say yes or no. But for us personally, I've set the camera to share singularly. So I can take mm -hmm. a load of photos, use the screen on the back as a little sort of tablet, flick through them, select the one I want with the uh, joystick, the info key, and then I just tap to send, and it just literally is connected via Bluetooth and Wi-Fi. Uh, if you just want to download the image through the app itself, you can use Bluetooth because it sends it at a slightly lower res. If, however, you want like the full resolution, you know, I think this is, what, 60-odd meg, you can basically download the image and it downloads the image in its full entirety. So you've got the whole image there. So it saves to your camera roll 
and then you literally can just go into your contacts and ping where it's gone, which is what we did today. Well, what we did today, we went out to uh, test the cameras out and, uh, well, I won't say luckily, <laughs> but there was a news event happening when we went out. Floods, the floods came last night, to torrential rain, biblical rain, and the river, uh, just not far from us, burst yeah, its banks. Yeah, yeah. So, um, as I've said on, on other um, videos on my channel uh, to people, it, you know, the beauty now is that, um, you know, uh, in the old days it was really hard to get pictures into newspapers. Now that you don't need dark rooms and uh, prints and chemicals and stuff, you can literally do it straight away. So we went down, we took a picture of uh, the flooded river, and within, I would say, two or three minutes. Well, tops. Uh, was it? Probably less than that. I really. don't know. Well, let's have a look. Let's we, have a look at... we were messing around with trying to find where we had to send it to. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it took us longer <laughs> to find the email address of the BBC <laughs> Midlands today <laughs> than it did um, uh, actually send the picture. Um, we did do a bit of filming down there. Let's have a look. We'll just take a picture of these flooded fields here. The river's burst its bank. Great weather picture. We've sent it to the local newspapers, we've sent it to the BBC. Right here, right on the app, straight from the camera, it's gone. Took me about two minutes, easy. This is absolutely fantastic for anybody doing news gathering or wanting to get anything into websites, newspapers, magazines, vlogs. It's absolutely fantastic. And if you're at a conference, if you're doing professional work where they need stuff for Instagram, Facebook, that kind of thing, it's going to be a game changer having the Nikon app uh, on this, meaning that we can send pictures straight away from the phone. Uh, now, there is one other thing that I just love about this camera, and that is image stabilization. You know, being able to hand hold slow shutter speeds. Now, I've always prided myself on being able to, to shoot <laughs> at conferences or inside uh, at down to like a 15th and yeah, sometimes yeah, an 8th yeah, yeah. and we thought we were super cool doing that but this camera just makes a mockery of us oh yeah I mean you know I think we were what was it the other day we were messing around with them and it was quarter of a second well we were having a how low can, can you, you go, go competition <laughs> between ourselves and I think we got it down I got it down to half a second I think um, what I did uh, when I was out um, by the canal uh, the other day, the water was coming out of the lock, so um, I took a quick picture. Oh yeah, I think you mentioned that. Yeah, I, t I took a quick picture, literally just on programme to see what it would do. And it kind of did an okay job, it froze the water a little, but there was a little bit of movement. So I thought, well imagine I wanted to, f to, to freeze this completely. Uh, uh, so I whacked the ISO up to a really stupidly high number. <laughs> Uh, so, so there will be mega contrast, but then I got the, um, the shutter up super high, took the picture and absolutely every bit of water is Pink. just frozen. And then the opposite way. I did the opposite. I took it all the way down to 100 on the ISO. I shut it down right the way to F22 and I managed to get a half a second exposure without a neutral density filter. And so I decided to try a handhold. So I handheld on half a second. Have a look. Absolutely remarkable that you can do this sort of stuff I without know. a tripod. I, I mean, that is just <laughs> not possible. How have they done it? I mean, I just I don't know yeah. how it works, yeah. but it does. So that's good enough for me. Obviously, um, you know, image stabilization is great. You, you can't have anything moving in the picture unless you're prepared for it to be blurred. Um, like water or, or light trails or, or whatnot, but as long as anything is static, you know, sharp. it's sharp. It's very yeah. sharp. It is, it's good, it is. So it's a complete game changer. Um, just the one thing about ISO, just, just, just before we wrap up, um, ISO, uh, when you're on video, oh, yeah. has got auto mode which is really good for transitions, and I know you used it. How did it get on? Yeah, I mean, it was only, you know, I, need, I didn't use it, I haven't used it to any sort of commercial extent. I was just doing a little experiment through, which you, you can't get more diverse, the inside of a car to the outside of a car, so looking through a window from your dashboard. That was when I was taking the picture it, yeah. in the puddle. Yeah, oh. I, did, I couldn't be bothered to get out, because you were taking the picture <laughs> yeah. in the puddle. It was gone. <laughs> yeah. But the auto ISO, which is dead easy to change as well, it's literally press the ISO button and move the front dial and back 
Oh, you, an A appears and you yeah, just got so I, so you've got a little A, a, and, yeah. a and a non. Okay. Obviously, in stills mode, I would always leave it in manual, mm -hmm. you know, because you know where you are, yeah. don't you? Well, but I thought this is, and you, I know before when we've looked at other kit and we've thought, you know, is that auto ISO good or bad? You know, when we've used it on Osmos and stuff like that, and you kind of think, mm, the sky gets a bit blotchy and, you know, mm. the clouds look like mm. it's twitching a bit. But I thought this was amazing. You know, it's so smooth, the transition. You know, okay, so you auto, just went light to dark, really. Light to dark, you know, from inside of a car to the outside of a car into the into the, the view and then back into the side of the inside the car, you know, just literally something as simple and as, you know, not uncomplicated as that, but very yeah. complicated for the camera ranges. Yeah. Well, I mean, that, that's something that I get a lot. If I'm doing... Um, if you've got somebody walking in or out of, of, of a, a door, build, a, a door. building, yeah. 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 I mean, yeah. I was going to say... You know, if you're doing a fly-through of a house oh, yeah. uh, and you're outside the house and you see the house and then you want to fly through the door and in and show the inside of the house. It's always a crafty edit there, isn't it? <laughs> it's always a crafty edit, yeah. But, but in actual fact, this just does it. And, you know, there are were, there were, there were cameras that do it, but you can see it clunking shut and the white balance, you know, change. But this just does it so smoothly on auto. It's, it's fantastic. Yeah, really, really good piece of kit. As I say, definitely easy for video, but perhaps I'd keep it on manual for the, the stills because it just gives you that, you know, you know where you are with the, the effect you're after, isn't it? You know, yeah. the depth of focus or, you know, the shutter speed or something like that. Yeah. You know, that's, that's the key for me with that. But it is a really good little trick of the camera itself. So, yeah, all in all, what are we gonna we're gonna wrap up now and say do we like this camera would we recommend it i definitely would yeah i think yeah definitely i think the way forward to go i mean for, for, to me to sum up is i love the bracket that means you suddenly haven't got to go out on a limb to change your entire kit and remortgage your house you know to buy all the lenses we've got and between us you know and you're used to using them because familiar familiarity if i can say that word familiarity is key isn't it because if you've worked with a piece of kit for so long you, you, i always find it a bit tricky when you're out and yeah, you're operating yeah. and you're thinking oh yeah. where's that button gone and where's this gone and where's that gone yeah fair dues i mean i get that with the video cameras you you know you you go and shoot for different operators and they use different yeah, kits yeah and then you know they all follow a certain pattern but it's the little nuances it's the little yeah where know, the, slot change buttons where, where do they put that on this and, camera and i mean all in all this camera the operating system it looks exactly the same as the DSLR on the back when yeah. you go through the menus. There's, yeah. there's a few more things on there, as we've highlighted. The buttons are in the same places. You know, there's a few bit extras here and there, which is easy to use, but you can still use your lenses. So you can still work at your best operative sort of manner, you know, high end, quick, turn it around. And I think that's the big thing for me is I wanted to try and stay with Nikon because we've always used Nikon. Um, and if you are going to a mirrorless, mirrorless lens for me and anybody else who's always used Nikon, A, it's economical sense, I think, because you can still use all your kit. And B, you know, I think this now, even with this lens for video, the F4 lens, the body, you know, I think it's a really good investment, if I'm being honest with you. Yeah, I definitely recommend it. I mean, it's a game changer. As soon as you start seeing the images coming off, you do start thinking. I mean, I'm I'm going to I'm going to put an image up now uh, taken on the um, this lens of let's say my D3s and this lens taken on uh, this uh, Z6. Uh, thank you, uh, Nikon, for lending us these to to have a look at. Yeah. It's been great. And, um, well, where can I get one? <laughs> so, to wrap up, what's it actually like using a mirrorless Nikon? Well, how would I describe it? Uh, different, I suppose. <laughs> I know that sounds like a bit of a cop-out, doesn't it? But actually, image quality is absolutely fantastic. Whether you're using the Nikon DSLR or a mirrorless, you know, with Nikon, you're gonna get good quality images, good processing. But what is different is the way that you use them, the way that they feel, the way that you operate. 
You see, the DSLR, it's big, it's chunky, it's go anywhere, it's take anything on. It's a tank of a camera. It's just gonna chew up whatever you throw at it. The mirrorless Z6 and the Z6 Mark II, well, they're small, light, nimble, sylph-like, I suppose, quick, easy to use. If a DSLR is a tank, then these mirrorless, they're like sports coupes. They're quick, they're fun, they're exciting. They capture amazing detail and color while making you think that they're not really there. Most of the time, I felt that I was carrying a lens about with me. And then there's the touch screen. This introduces a whole new way of thinking when taking pictures. Yeah, there's a whole generation of phone users and they finally persuaded the old guard that this might indeed be the future of taking photographs. Ah, let's not forget the app. That makes a big difference. It means that you can take pictures from the camera straight onto your cell phone and get them emailed out. This is a long overdue and welcome addition. And it's introduced to the mirrorless line. There are some DSLRs like the 850 that can benefit from this app too, but it's a game changer. I really like it. And if you want to see a video on how that works, I'll put one on right now. Ah, oh, and let's not forget one tiny bit of kit that may go under the radar. It's the adapter, the FTZ adapter. You see what they did there? FTZ, F2Z. The F mount lenses will go on the Z cameras. It's a big game changer. I spent four decades building a lens kit. If I wanted to go mirrorless and I went Fuji, Sony or Lumix, I'd have to cash all my lenses in for peanuts. But now I don't. With Nikon, I can use them on my mirrorless cameras. The firmware through update has fixed just about every one of the early flaws in this camera, particularly the autofocus system and the eye detection and that fantastic PETS eye detection. Don't know how they do that. It's brilliant. So. Would I buy this camera? Yes, in an instant. So, will I have all my DSLRs on eBay this afternoon to finance buying this mirrorless Z6 Mark II? No, I won't. You see, they're different beasts. They feel different to use. So I suppose what I'm saying is, I want it all. I want both of them. I want a sturdy DSLR when I'm out photographing your demo but I want the lightness and deftness and speed of a Z6 on my shoulder when I'm at a conference. When I need two or three bodies, I want those light bodies that I don't even know are there. And I want to be able to send images out straight from the camera. I want everything. <laughs> so, as you've seen from the images, I do think this is a remarkable camera. And what Nikon have done inside it uh, with image processing is phenomenal. I know Nikon have said recently that the company's profits aren't what they would like them to be. And they have at last readily admitted that they were slow out of the blocks in the mirrorless race. But their new cameras are changing that. I can see them coming on strong on the outside lane and they're catching up fast. And in the home straight, they might just be about to overtake the others on the line. Watch this space.